Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. Today's video is a requested video to go over the medications that we carry in our paramedic ambulances. Now, I'm on duty right now, so there is a 99.9% .9 chance that uh, we get interrupted during this, but I'm gonna do my best to get through all of this, uh, open up each of the medication boxes that we carry, and kind of give you an overview of what these medications are and what we use them for. This isn't gonna be super in depth. I'm not gonna be going over the specific indications, contraindications of every med, um, but this should give you a pretty good idea of our capabilities um, and some of the things we carry. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first medication box we have is the simple med box. Now these are just basic life support meds that are on each of our ambulances. And because we're a hospital-based system, our larger med bags with narcotics and controlled substances are actually stocked by pharmacy. So having this box allows us to quickly restock our own medications that we use um, very often. So in this box, you'll see we have, uh, I'll take these ones out because these aren't tagged. We've got your duonebs, so your albuterol and ipotropium mixture. You've got your albuterol only uh, packets here. We've got Zofran, Zofran tablets that can be taken orally. Zofran vials. Now we're in a college town here. This is Iowa State University. So on nights, um, we run a lot of drunk uh, students. So this is a lot of this goes towards them. Um, we also carry baby aspirin and then nitro tablets, nitroglycerin. So putting these away, we'll move on to our main medication box. All right, so this is our main medication box we carry on our ambulances. It's a Pelican Case 1500, specifically made for EMS medications. We carry this just because it's pretty rugged, um, easy way to store our meds, and it has easy way to tag our meds. Not the easiest thing to carry, but we have a fire department that does a lot of lifting for us so we always have enough um, help on scene for us. So let's get into this box. All right, so you'll see that this has a bottom portion and a top portion. Let's start with the top portion here. Now I realize there's a little bit of glare here. I'll do my best to uh, minimize that for you. In this top, um, we've got a couple meds right off the bat. Now most of these are gonna be our uh, ACLS meds are advanced cardiac life support medications that are not down in the boxes. So to start up in the upper right corner, we've got 6, 12, and 12 of adenosine. And I'm honestly not sure if this is focusing. I don't have a return screen on my um, camera, so hopefully that's focusing for you. We are getting diltiazem um, in the next iteration of our protocols for um, AFib, but uh, we don't have it yet, so that's what this blanks for. We have metoprolol. In this pocket, we carry our um, amiodarone for your uh, wide complex arrhythmias. Down here, we carry levofed. Now, levofed is al always um, mixed into a drip for us, and then we give this in infusion. This is our primary presser that we use. We have cal your calcium gluconate. And then we carry uh, nitroglycerin, aspirin, um, and nitro paste um, in here. So we've got the tablets, we've got some paste we, paste we can rapidly apply, um, and then the aspirin tablets, similar to what we have in the simple med box. If we flip this compartment down, we've got a couple more be, uh, meds in the back. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it, but down here we've got racemic epinephrine, um, Duonebs, and then just your plain albuterol, and that's all repeated from the simple med box. Up here, we've got haloperidol for combative patients, excited delirium. Oxytocin, um, which is for postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, Catorolac, really great for your kidney stones um, and like muscular back pain, especially if somebody might be like a narc seeker or something. This is a good alternative to narcotics for pain medications. We carry extra Zofran up here. We use a ton of that. 
And then in here we've got our ampules of Epi 1 to 1000 for uh, anaphylaxis and then diphenhydramine uh, going down that anaphylaxis and allergic reaction protocol. In this pocket we've got our methylprednisolone, our solumedrol, um, which we're carrying for your anaphylaxis patients, your allergic reaction patients, um, just a steroid that uh, takes about 45 minutes to work, but we get it started in the ambulance. And then by the time they're in the ER, it might be the difference between if they're buying themselves an endotracheal tube or not. And then lastly, in this pocket, we've got our magnesium sulfate. Um, and we carry this for torsades de point um, or for uh, seizures of eclampsia. Uh, we have the mag sulfate. We also can hang this in a drip form and uh, use this for anaphylaxis or severe asthma as it is a bronchodilator uh, and is fairly effective. So now we're going to move down to the base of the box here. So in the base of the box, we have most of our uh, ACLS medications and our pre-filled medications um, in this side. So to start off, We've got our sodium bicarb for acidotic patients, patients with prolonged downtimes. Not, it's not routinely given in ACLS anymore, but we have it just in case. We've got two boxes of D50. We've got atropine sulfate, um, and we've got a stack of these. And interesting fact, um, Ames, Iowa and Mary Greeley Medical Center is actually a Department of Defense stockpile of atropine and nerve gas antidote. So we have a huge case of atropine upstairs in the pharmacy uh, that we can give um, in the event of a terrorist attack or a nerve agent release. Just kind of an interesting fact. Over here we carry Narcan and we carry a lot of Narcan. Uh, they found that a lot of these carfentanil overdoses um, are taking upwards of 20 uh, to 25 milligrams of Narcan to reverse the narcotic overdose. So we've started carrying a lot just in case we run into that situation. Um, and it is something we give fairly regularly at our service. In here we also carry lidocaine as a secondary antidysrhythmic. Also it can be used to flush an inner osseous line if you started it on a conscious patient to kind of numb that site because the medication pressure is actually very, very painful. So moving on to this side of the box, this has all our controlled substances and then our um, RSI medications and our epinephrine for cardiac arrest. So we've got a bunch of pre-filled epinephrines for cardiac arrest, ACLS protocol. Uh, and then in this pocket, we've got some oral glucose. This takes forever and I don't usually give it if I can avoid it just because I've had tons of patients throw up on me because of it. In this pocket we've got our controlled substances. So in here we have our um, morphine, uh, fentanyl. So this is just our pain management uh, compartment here. And most of us will reach for fentanyl but morphine is still an option if somebody has an allergy or sensitivity to one or the other. Then we have our benzodiazepine, and I'm not going to open these up because these are tagged by pharmacy and I don't want to give them more work than I have to. In here, we carry our Valium, our Versed, and our Ativan uh, for seizure control, continued sedation, um, and then certain musculoskeletal injuries if they need muscle relaxants, um, we'll give uh, some Valium to that. And then we also carry ketamine in here, and we use ketamine for a variety of things at our service. We use this for excited delirium, combative patients. We also use it as an induction for rapid sequence intubation if need be. Um, and then we're looking at getting a protocol for pain control, um, but that's down the road that should be coming out in the next iteration of our protocols. And then the last controlled substance box we have here, you can't really see much in it, but essentially we have our succinicoline, our automidate, and then administration kit for that um, because when we're RSIing we don't really like to be reaching around for administration kit uh, when it could be right there. So that's pretty much it for this box. We're going to move over and we've got one more medication box to go through and that is our uh, transfer bag. So this is referred to as our transfer bag and that's because these are medications we're predominantly only going to be using for a long, longer distance transfer. 
Uh, these bridge more into the critical care arena as opposed to the 911, um, but they are medications we have at our disposal. So opening this bag up, In the top pocket, essentially, we carry just a lot of fentanyl and morphine. There are times that we're gonna be going very, very long distances, so to Iowa City, um, to Nebraska, to ma even Madison, Wisconsin periodically, um, and then Rochester, Minnesota all the time for Mayo Clinic. And when the patient needs continued, uh, continued pain management that's beyond what we carry in our normal bags, we'll pick this up and then have these options as additional pain medications. We also carry hydromorphone, um, so Dilaudid, as a, another means of pain control if the other two have failed. We carry more ketamine, and this can be mixed in a drip form for us, um, just in case we can uh, use this uh, to continue sedation or for pain management. We carry rocuronium as a secondary paralytic, a long-lasting paralytic. We try not to use this in an emergency environment um, because if you've got a trauma alert and you go present a patient to a neurosurgeon that's been given rocuronium, that neurosurgeon is going to have to wait 45 minutes to do any kind of neuro exam on them. And if you know anything about neurosurgeons, they really don't like that and they can yell pretty loud. So we really are only giving this if somebody's already intubated and we really need to keep them uh, paralyzed. And then of course we mix this with a good sedative so that they're not just paralyzed. Furosemide, um, just in case they need continuing uh, that from the medical floor. And then we have D5 to mix certain medications in. And last but not least, And I don't know of many other services that are carrying this, but we are carrying um, uh, propofol, so the Diprovan. Um, this is predominantly not used in EMS because if you're agitating the patient, moving them a lot, uh, they'll actually start to wake up with propofol. However, it is a very effective continued sedation medication that's pre-mixed, really easy to use. So we do use this for an intubated patient being transferred to Des Moines or something like that. And then a lot of patients that are intubated in the ICU will have Diprovan hanging. Um, so uh, we carry it just in case, um, and we've used it a number of times, and it's been very, very useful for us. That's all I've got for this video. If you have any questions about the medications we carry, please leave them in the comments down below. Uh, be sure you like this video and subscribe. I will see you next week.